going okay. Glory to God. We are, I believe, yeah, we are recording. Julie, would you want to record this? Sure. Okay, let me give you the opportunity to do okay. that. You'll have to tell me how to do that. Um, there's a record button down on the bottom. Uh, you see it? And now I see stop video, mute, share. Yeah, stop video means, yeah, that means it's recording. There's a more. Oh, record. There's a more that has record. Yeah. Is that it? Yep. Okay. So I just hit that. Yeah, and then that will that will be saved to your computer afterwards. Fabulous. Okay, and she's already starting. Hang on. We are going to get started. Hallelujah. And it's so good to have all of you with us tonight and those that are yet to come on. And we just appreciate all of you so, so very, very much. And we just want to say hello to everyone and just welcome you aboard. And I'm going to open up with prayer and then we're going to go for it. Glory to God, because tonight is a good night. God bless you. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for tonight. We thank you for Sister Julie being able to come on the broadcast. I thank you for each and every one that is here tonight that is coming in. I ask you to just bless them. I ask you to strengthen them. I ask that our words would be something that would entice them to think, that they would not only think, but they would receive revelation and they would receive hope and they would receive help and that they would receive strength in these days. And I pray, Lord, that you would just use us for your glory and that you wouldn't stop. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's good to have you aboard tonight. Julie, I just, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, this is one of my dearest friends, and I just, we just love Julie, and she's the editor oh, and of Elijah List, and aren't you the producer of the Elijah Streams? Yes. Great, great, and I'm going to be on that one of these days when I get out yeah. there. Come on out. <laughs> Coming on out. Right now, I'm not flying anywhere. <laughs> But it's so good to have you on. It's so good to have all of you with us tonight. We do appreciate you and ask God to bless you in every way. And we just appreciate everything that God is doing in the land today. And so, Julie, I'm just going to ask you, what's God laying on your heart? Wow, there's so much going on right now. And we're all hearing many, many things. And they're all working together as pieces of the puzzle. Puzzle, and he's just confirming and, and putting things together and unifying the body of Christ. Um, I just I was just talking to um, a, a couple of coworkers today too that it feels like it's a day of the last shall be first and the first shall be last, and he's leveling the playing field. And I remember I had a dream a year or two ago, and I, I wrote about it on the Elijah list, um, that those who feel last in line and behind, God is welcoming you to the VIP section. And I remember getting to the VIP section, I was last in line. And so that's really a now word for many people who have felt hidden. They have felt like it's not their time yet, that you're going to be ushered right up front. And even today we posted an amazing word. You have to go read it. You know, a Wilf and de Havilland Ford, their seven-year-old son. 
had an amazing dream where the Lord told him that the COVID-19, something significant would happen and it's coming to an end and something significant about April 30th. And so we posted that and we've just gotten amazing feedback so far. And it's a seven-year-old out of the mouths of babe. We've just heard um, children are dreaming dreams and getting revelations yes. about COVID-19. Isn't that exciting? It's really yeah. exciting. We had um, my, uh, my daughter-in-law's daughter um, when my granddaughter was rushed to the hospital because she had something, I don't, I think she had something stuck in her ear or something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And I went over to look after the kids. This was like a year ago. And mm -hmm. I went over to look after the other kids. And Kaylee says to me, she goes, what are we going to do? We have to do something to help Piper. We got to do something to help Piper. I said, let's pray. And she's five. And she says, okay, not only did we pray, she got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I love it. And it wasn't long after that. They came home and pipes was fine. Wow. Out of the, I mean, the prayer, the prayer really meant, it really meant something to her. And mm -hmm. that child, I'm going to tell you, there's just something about that child. And I just, I just can't wait to see what God's going to do with him. So thank God. I have to go and look that up on what you had on Elijah's list. Cause I didn't look up any prophetic words today at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just am putting two and two together. I'm actually going to share part of a revelation of the Lord giving me a word about the children of Thailand, and I just realized that now. Well, so. that's great. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you and just let yeah. God have his way. Absolutely. Well, you had asked me to share a little bit about the ins and outs of writing and prophecy and um, publishing, you know, words. And so I thought I'd give a little of insight about that. You know, I've... Um, I used to be in my former life before I was in ministry, I used to be a manager at a retail company called Fred Meyer. Now they were bought out by Kroger. So they merged with Kroger. So everyone's heard of Kroger's, but Fred Meyer is a, is a Northwest retail chain. And so I just kind of stumbled into writing and I, um, went to work for a small Salem newspaper a friend of mine had. And I was like, wow, I, I just really loved writing and exploring this gift. And then that led to being the editor of The Elijah List. And it's just cool how God works all that. And so I didn't know that I would have a position in writing and in media. And um, my own father, he worked for uh, a newspaper, the main newspaper in Salem. It, it's the second largest um, in Oregon, the Statesman Journal newspaper, and he worked there for 45 years. So he's been in media for 45 years. And I little did I know I'd follow in the footsteps of being in, you know, media and publishing just as he was. And I remember as a little kid visiting him at work, and that was when they had the big newspaper rolls, the big drum rolls, and I'd run around them, you know, as he was, you know, dealing with that. He, he did a lot of machinery work and printing work. And so I would visit him and run around the newspaper Maybe I'm not supposed to say that, but that's what I did. <laughs> that was way back in the day. So anyway, um, I just remember that always being around the newspaper. So that's pretty cool that that's led me to where I am today. And so I thought I'd share a little bit of ins and outs of writing and, and some advice that I've given writers over the years and new writers. And I've just seen amazing people over the years just blossom into incredible ministries and revelations from the Lord. And that's what they're known for. So I'll just start with a little of that. You know, if you've read the Elijah list, you know, we're known for posting accurate and tested prophetic voices with a good track record. And so often um, those are the people we will um, post and that's how we build a reputation of, you know, being trusted and, and people are confident in the words that we publish. Now we do, um, you know, post new um, writers time to time, but we also ask um, that they have a proven track record or somebody knows them, maybe one of the authors that we work with knows them. Hey, I know this person. They've been tried and true and, and they're really, you know, moving up in the prophetic movement. And so we always have room to grow and we're always increasing in that. But with new writers, we will often ask for a recommendation, like I said, and, and watch, kind of just watch them and, and gaze how some of their words have come to pass. So the, the, the biggest thing I ask for new writers is, how do I start writing? I'm sure you get that too, Teresa, being a prophetic online newspaper as well. How do I start writing? So I encourage new writers to start a new blog site. That's what I first do. There are plenty of blog sites out there that are free. 
You can also just start sharing, make yourself a free Facebook page of your writing. And that's the best way to begin. Get it out there. Write what you're hearing from the Lord. Start sharing with people you know, your friends, your family, your loved ones. Ask them to share your word too. You know how shares work on Facebook. The more shares you have, the more it goes viral. And so that builds a base for you and for people to get to know you. And they can watch themselves to see how your words are coming to pass, you know. And then as you're going in your writing, ask people, you know, for feedback. Your, your friends, your family, ask them, ask them how that word resonates with them. Has God been speaking to them about the same thing? Oftentimes, you know, being the editor, I will all of a sudden get a revelation from the Lord and he'll start speaking to me a specific theme. And then all of a sudden within days, I'll get words just around what he told me. So that's how I'll know, hey, this is a word from the Lord because he told me about this and there's a theme going on. And also all of a sudden I'll get a vision of somebody, an author, and I'll know they're about to send in a word that the Lord wants us to pay attention to. And so those are some of the ways that I gauge um, some of the writings coming in. Um, scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 13, 1, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. So that's the first step. Are the words and the revelations you're receiving, are you getting rev um, witnesses, two or three witnesses and getting confirmations? And that's how you know, hey, I really am hearing from the Lord. This right, God is on this revelation and writing. And whether, this is a big one. Are you ready? Whether you write articles and or a book, I tell everyone, write from your heart. You know, people think you have to go um, to, you know, have an education in writing, go to college for it. I actually did take um, some college writing classes, but I went to school for accounting and business. So, um, but I didn't get a writing degree or anything like that, but write from your heart. You know, when God gives you a word, he, it's just going to shoot straight from your, from his heart to yours, just write from your heart. And then don't worry if you're not an eloquent writer. That's what editors are for. Editors will help you edit your word kind of hone it in, move things around, shift things around, and give you feedback. That's what editors are for. And oftentimes when I write, I will need someone to help me edit because it's it's hard for me at times to be the editor and writer and wear both hats. I do, but then I'm also my own worst critic, like, nope, nope, that's going out. Nope, I don't like that. I don't like how I wrote that, you know? So it's always good to have feedback from people that you trust, in, and editors will help you do that. Um, Often when I start writing, I will get a simple glimpse, a vision, a simple word, and I start writing it down. And from there, God will give you more. And so I would just encourage you to be faithful, to journal, to blog, and, and to write what you see, what you're hearing. Um, don't ignore those quick thoughts and glimpses. Oftentimes we do. We, we, we get those thoughts and glimpses that come to us quickly and we're like, was that God? Did I just make that up in my head? Was that revelation really from him? And we question that. We've all done that. And then you dismiss it. And then you find out later, wow, that came to pass. And that revelation others have had, and it's coming to pass. So don't ignore those glimpses. Those are, those are often from the Lord. So start journaling and blogging those. And then sometimes I don't get all the revelation at once. Um, it comes in spurts. Um, if it doesn't come all at once, just write it down. Pray over it, go back, and God will give you more. He'll be faithful. If it's something really from the Lord, he'll be faithful to give you those other pieces. It may uh, come in segments. So just write them down in segments. A few paragraphs at a time, go back and you know add more to it. Ask the Lord for more. Oftentimes you've heard of the word writer's block, like I can't think of anything today. Well, that's a great time to just go worship, pray in the spirit, you know, pray in tongues, pray in the spirit, get on your worship music, and then more downloads will come. I've often found too that I get a lot of revelation during worship. You know, when you're in church, all of a sudden God will start speaking to you and giving these downloads while you're worshiping him. So that's another way to deal with, you know, getting more of those pieces, especially if you're dealing with writer's block, you know, just set, a, set some time away from the Lord and he'll give, he'll be faithful to help you finish that word. And um, we know Philippians 1, 6, right? Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. So he will help you complete. He will help you complete that work. Um, and we're also very familiar with the verses from Habakkuk 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. 
a point of time I'm going to get into here in a minute. Um, but at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And so that's probably some of the biggest first impressions that I can give to new writers is um, just to be faithful to writing, blogging, journaling, and watch God just move and, and pour into you more and more and more. As you're faithful to him, as you're faithful in your writing, he'll be faithful to give it to you. And so I wanted to share a couple of powerful words I received on the spot. And this has really helped me grow in my writing gift. Um, I had a powerful vision and encounter with um, the children of Thailand. And this was a, quite a few years ago. And so I'm just going to read a short excerpt of this word. It's on the Elijah list if you'd like to read it. It's a vision of the children of Thailand. So this is, this is I'm writing about what I'm getting while I'm writing. What? I am writing is making me tremble, and I'm shaking from the revelation I just received that I shared below. Sometimes it'll just come upon you so powerfully, and it'll just, you'll be shaking in that revelation. The revelations and visions are so intense, and I tremble in awe of what I am hearing and seeing. I have never received such a fierce revelation from the heart of God before. I feel his love. I feel his intolerance. I feel his strength. I feel his compassion and broken heart. I felt that all at the same time. I feel his fire and anger kindled for the injustice done to children. I feel his spirit of breakthrough. I feel the spirit of the fear of the Lord upon me. I feel a force of energy I cannot explain. It is so powerful, beautiful, and fearful at the same time. So um, on that last Friday night, I went into a vision seeing the faces of children in Thailand where I was born, where I'm from. Then a fierce presence of God came upon me and said, go write these down. And that's right out of Habakkuk too, right? <laughs> write the vision and make it plain. So go write these down. So uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going. So <laughs> I immediately went into my prayer writing room and I wrote down these words and revelations. It took me about 10 minutes to write them. And it was one of the most intense moments that I've experienced with God yet. And in this vision over the children in Thailand, I saw many pure innocent faces before me. These faces were filled with much sadness, despair from all the poverty and sin they are living in. I then asked the Lord what it would take to break down the powers of darkness over there and how the children would be rescued. How are they going to be rescued, Lord? I asked. I was stunned by God's response in his words. He said that he would rise up the children and they would no longer tolerate being treated as slaves and being handed over to the sex slavery industry and poverty. He said he was going to place his spirit in them and they would rise up and say no to the enemy. He was going to come upon them so strong and so fierce and they would not tolerate the sin and the filth they've been surrounded by. They are going to take a stand for all the injustice done to them and their generation and simply say, no, you cannot treat us this way anymore. We know who the most high God is and he is coming upon us and he's causing us to make a stand. They will cry out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They will cry out for injustice for the poor, the weak, the hurt, and the abused. God is going to immediately download into them their true identity in Christ. When the spirit of the Lord comes upon them, they will know instantly who they are and the inheritance they have in him. They will demand for injustice to be served, for justice, excuse me, to be served, to be restored, and to be poured out. They will demand for past generations' inheritances to be poured onto the land. They are an army of the children of the Most High God, and they will pour out love and justice to one another. They will say, this is how you will treat me. This is how I want to be loved. This is how I want to be honored. This is how we want our generation to live. Almost done. As I saw the children of Thailand rise up, God said, this is for all nations. What will happen in Thailand will shake the nations to rise up in their true identity and take a stand for injustice in their own lands. No more is what I hear from the voices of the smallest children. No more you cannot treat us this way. The spirit of God is rising upon the smallest of children throughout the earth. He is giving them a trumpet in one hand and a sword in the other. Their voices will pierce the thickest darkness throughout the land. The sound of a child's voice is intolerable to the enemy. He cannot bear the weight of a child's declarative voice and a child's bold faith. 
a child's voice is like fingernails across a chalkboard to the enemy. Um, he's running in fear as the children of many nations arise to speak out. He is terrified of the small children, for the kingdom of God is theirs. Childlike faith is a most powerful force. It creates, it moves, it loves, it heals, it brings signs and wonders, and it never stops because the power of its belief. So I'll, I'll leave it with what God says here. God says, I will rescue my children. I will come upon them and cause them to arise. They carry my authority, my identity, and my power. They can have what they say. Their voices will carry unto the ends of the earth. I hear them. I have listened to them. I will shake the foundation that even one of their voices crying out to me. Their day of deliverance is near. They are crying out in justice, not only on those living, but on all the children who have been martyred. They also carry the weight of the anointing of the martyrs who have gone before them. I have heard every single cry from every single suffering child on the earth and who are now in heaven. I am acting upon their cries. I cannot tolerate their cries any longer. I am a God of my word, and it is now time for me to move on my suffering children's behalf. They are everything to me. I live and I die for them. I cannot and will not tolerate the injustice done to them. I will come upon them with the sword of my spirit and cause each and every one of them to arise and speak out for me and tear down intolerable sin that has been done to them. They will tear it down. They will tear it down. So that's an excerpt of that word. Oh, that is glorious. Yeah. That is so glorious. God do it in the name of Jesus and make haste. Yes. Oh. So I got that word years ago. Years it's ago. Time. It's time. Yeah. And I believe like many others have re recently said that this will be a year and a decade of justice. Yeah. On How many times have we heard that recently? Yes. And so, as I said in Habakkuk 2 reveals, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, mm -hmm. appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. So often we get revelation years in advance, as you know, because people have been sharing words that even like David Wilkerson received, yes. in, it was the mid 80s about the plagues coming to the earth. And, you know, Bob Jones got words years ago about plagues. And so oftentimes we'll get words years in advance and it's for an appointed time. And so as I'm writing about what to share on this broadcast, he reminded me of that word that I just shared about the children years ago. And it's, I believe it's an appointed time for it to come to pass. So I have a few more things to share, but maybe if you want to give some feedback or lay in there. Well, I just want to say that well, there are a couple things that you brought out, especially about getting feedback when you write out a word. That's yeah. really important. What I do a lot is, and you all know, I mean, I have to write it really, really big because I have an eye problem. So I don't always see, you know, the mistakes that I made. So what I've been doing is I read it out loud. Yes. And I, I don't read it out loud to me. I read it out loud to someone else. Mm -hmm. And if I read it out loud, I go, oh, I just checked that. I just saw that mistake. I just saw that. I just saw that. And, you know, you got to go back because sometimes when I'm prophesying and a lot of times I'll just prophesy the word right into my phone. And yeah. then I got to go back and do everything that Surrey undid because, <laughs> you know, when when you're dictating into your phone, sometimes it just transforms the words. Mm -hmm. And so you got to go in and check that out. But I thought that was really important. And then when you were talking about the, um, the children in Thailand and what you were seeing and hearing about that in Thailand, I really am sensing that this is going to become a now word very quickly. Yeah, I do too. I, I am sensing it because everybody's being silenced that has maturity, which is the senior citizen, the veteran, which has the oath, and the Christian, which has the anointing. And so as the boy, and I can't remember the name of the boy from the Catholic school, I think it was, that stood there while that Indian was beating the oh, drum in his face. And I know who you're talking about, but you know I don't know who I'm talking about. Yeah. It was these kids that are about to make a shift in the atmosphere. It's, mm -hmm. the, it's, it's these young people that are going to, it's going to come out of nowhere. Yes. And I just think that's a now word. And I'm, I'm taking that even for my grandchildren. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know you've had some revelations about the pen of a ready writer. Yes. Yes. I actually saw it's on Elijah list and I had news media 
this is this is not a joke. I had news media that were from the super far left contact me, and it was really weird the way they contacted me, but they contacted me and they said, do you really believe this word that you wrote about the pen of the ready writer? And I said, absolutely, I, because what I saw was I saw the, I'm driving down the road and the Lord says, look up, and I look up, and the cloud is in the shape of the quill. And the cloud began to move like this, like a quill. And then it was scribing and I was like, oh my gosh. And I heard loudly, this is the season of the pen of the ready writer. And because of that, there was so much, I, you know, when you put it out on Elijah list, I had hundreds of emails coming in. I don't even know if I answered them all because I'm the type of person that when a, when it comes in, I respond to them all, you know, I'll take the time and say, you know, write out the message back to the person, thank them for contacting me. But it's true because, and this thing about the kids, like what I saw Kaylee do, mm -hmm. what I've seen others do. I'm going to tell you, it was my son at the age of nine. And I think I've shared this with you before when I'm driving down the road, coming out of church. And I was so frustrated because I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting on something for a long time. And I, and I said to my son, I go, I wonder if it's ever going to happen. And I'm so tired of waiting. And he just nonchalantly turned his head and looked at me. He goes, gee, mom, Jesus waited 2,000 years for you. Wow. Puts it in a whole different perspective when they look at it. Yep, it sure does. And I remember I went to a children's um, conference. Out of that word, um, a minister in Northeast Thailand uh, invited me to a children's conference in Konkan, Thailand. And there were, I want to say, at least 300 children there. I have some amazing pictures. And I remember um, they all got baptized in the spirit when um, we were there. They had amazing visions and we had them write down the visions that they were seeing, the revelations that they were seeing. They were writing them down themselves and drawing pictures and they were profound. And I remember one night when I was there, I had a dream and I shared it with the children where there were many people vacationing in Thailand. You know, Thailand is a beautiful tropical place. They have beautiful beaches, beautiful waters, especially down south in Phuket area. And they actually have a place called the James Bond Island because I believe that's where Golden Finger was filmed. Oh. They call it James Bond Island. It's a beautiful tropical location. And so while people are vacationing, all of a sudden in my dream, the uh, picture, com the vision completely changes. And I see these... Uh, children that were, um, you know, very sad. They um, were oppressed and they were in mud, muddy waters. And all of a sudden, the waters kept rising and rising and rising until it came over their mouth. And then I woke up and I knew the Lord was telling me the children of Thailand have been silenced. They haven't been taken care of. They're in muddy waters. They're surrounded by all the sins of the element. While people come to Thailand for the beauty to take in, you know, this right. exotic, right. you know, climate, these children are suffering and they're being silent. Mm. No more, no more. So I think, you know, in, in the, in the revelations that we're going to be seeing this new breed of writers, the pen of the ready writer, and it definitely includes children. They're going to get powerful revelations and it's easy for children to believe, you know, unless we come um, as a little child, we can't enter the kingdom of heaven. They, right. when they get stuff from the Lord. They, they believe it. Well, that's that childlike faith. Yes. Uh, when I was teaching Sunday school, when I first became a Christian, I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that's how I really learned the Bible. Mm -hmm. I had to teach Sunday school and I had to learn the lesson. I had to memorize it. And I remember one day I was sitting in the class and I had the five, four, five and six year olds. And I was sitting in the class and I was looking at all of them and they just didn't have very many smiles on their face. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? I'm not going to sit here and just teach this class. I gave them all a piece of paper and I told them all to grab a colored pencil or whatever they want. And I said, I want you to draw me a picture of what it's like at home. Mm. And I said, what? And I said, draw me a picture. What's mommy and daddy doing at home? What happens at home? And the pictures there were so many of them where the people were smoking. Um, one had um, the dog was in the picture, the cat was in the picture. You know, it was, it was, but what it did, 
is that they were actually prophesying and giving word of wisdom and knowledge as to what was really happening. And I remember one of the kids reached over and grabbed someone else's picture and said, no, 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 let's fix that. Wow. And it just, it went on and on like that in the class. And we were the only class that didn't have a bench that had where the kids could get on their knees and, and have an altar to pray. So we had the wailing wall. So I told them all about the wailing wall. And they would lay up against that wall and they would pound that wall and start praying. And when they did, the pastor would come in and say, what's going on in here? And the kids would go, we're praying, we're praying for mommy, we're praying for daddy, or we're praying for the pastor, or we're praying for this, or we're praying for that. And it was out of these kids that my own spirit was ignited. And my son was, I was a new Christian and he was around four years old and he dragged me to the altar or just, just before he turned five, he dragged me to the altar to get saved. He wanted to get saved. He was, he's like, I'm such a miserable sinner. I mean, here he is, he's going on five years old, you know, and he's telling everybody he's a miserable sinner. And I was, I didn't know what to do. So the pastor told me to stand back. So I just stand back, went back to the to the pew and I'm looking at him and he comes back and he goes, mom. And I'm like, honey. And he goes, mommy, I'm all clean now. I'm all clean now. And you're going to be my teacher and you're going to be my pastor. So if anybody is mad that I am a minister of the gospel and that I'm a pastor of a church for 30 years, you can blame my son. You can either blame him or thank him because he was one of those kids that would go up to that wailing wall and say, don't let my mommy leave the gospel. Mm -hmm. He would do that. And these, I really believe that these kids, when they're, once they're touched with the truth of God, I think that the world is their oyster. It's at their feet. Absolutely. And we have to listen to them. Yes. And as you're speaking, I just am remembering my own grandma. You know, when we moved from Thailand to here, we stayed with my grandma for a few months until we got settled. And so, um, you know, she picked us up from the airport. My dad was still in the military. He couldn't come yet. And uh, my, my grandparents, my, my dad's parents picked up the, my mom, who they've never met, two children they've never met from Thailand. <laughs> and we went to live with them. And so my grandma was a Sunday school Bible school teacher for 40 years, wow. 40 years. And so I grew up you know, learning about Jesus. And I received Christ through my grandma and I um, went to her Sunday school teachings and um, she just had amazing revelation, especially for children and adults. She, she told, uh, taught adults as well, but she loved children and she loved children's ministry. And I have her Bible now that uh, is from the early 1900s. And I will, when I think about her and reminisce and I miss her, she's been gone now for almost 20, about 20 years, I guess. And her Bible is full and packed of highlights, underlines, and little uh, ministry clippings and newspaper clippings. And all of a sudden, one will fall out. That'll really speak to me. Yeah. So she laid a foundation for me as a child. And so I'll never forget that. It's important that we sow into the next generation because you never know what they could end up doing in life. Like you said, for yourself, you never know what they could end up doing in life that you're sowing into them. You just don't know, Julie. No. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen some of those kids that were in my Sunday school class and almost every one of them said, I got saved in your class. Well, I was a young Christian and I felt everybody had to get saved. So I just went out and won everybody to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I just would drag them all to church. I'd say, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There's healing here. There's the miracles here. There's all this stuff here, you know, come on, come on. Because my life was so changed. Mm -hmm. But what really solidified everything was when a child, their faith was so big. Mm -hmm. I felt so small that I, this is what I tell, I tell my son a lot. I said, do you realize we grew up with God together? That it was because of your being a child and I had to have childlike faith. We learned everything together. And so we grew up in the Lord together and not very many people have that opportunity. 
but I did with my son and he prophesied and he was there when people came from the dead, when we raised him from the dead. He, I remember the day he put on military fatigues and came in singing, God's got an army marching through this land. I mean, he would get up and do it because he just believed it. And if we could just follow with that, if yeah. we could just, like you were saying in the writing, if you see it, write it down. If you feel it, write it down. Don't miss that opportunity. Because now I long for that opportunity with my son. I Definitely. long for that. And we don't want to miss it. Because no. I am reminded almost every day, train up a child in the way he should go. Yeah. And in their old age, they will not depart from it. And I'm okay. like, do it, God. Do it. And we have to hang on to those scriptures, I think. Right. And she certainly sewed into me. She was the one who took us in from Thailand before my dad could get us all settled in. I mean, here she was uh, taking in these, these family members she never met. And my mom was a Buddhist at the time. <laughs> Just like God, you know, and I'm a seer and I operate in discerning of spirits. I'd be like, uh, you're going to leave your junk outside my house. <laughs> okay. Oh, my grandma, she was so full of love and she got us all saved. I mean, it's, it's all about that. She's just full of love. And that's what I remember about her. She did not care where people are, were at. She just loved them dearly. And that brought such healing and deliverance without her even knowing it, just by loving them. And that's what it's all about. So I wanted to share a couple um, of other quick revelations um, and then I'll be done. So when I started working for the Elijah List, I received an amazing vision that I've seen now come to pass over many writers throughout the years. And also I believe it's a now word as God is equipping his writers in a fresh new way. In this vision, I was sitting at my computer and a beam of light from heaven appeared over my head and went straight into my inner being. It was just like this big gold beam of light. And the light represented heavenly downloads of revelation coming in and my hands were typing very fast, trying to keep up with the revelation being poured in. I was typing as fast as I could, and I couldn't even type fast enough with the revelation pouring in from heaven. So I really believe that that's a now word as well, that God is releasing a new breed of writers in this decade that will usher in new heavy, heavenly revelations on the earth. And so my, and that includes children too. We've got to pay attention to what kids are, are receiving. Just like that huge word we um, published today by the Ford's um, seven-year-old son and stuff like that is going to happen a lot. So my encouragement to all the writers out there, new and you've been there for a while, to not ignore those glimpses that come to you. Write them down as you are faithful to write those small glimpses out. They will turn into massive heavenly downloads from the Lord and books and books as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why it's so important to not ignore those glimpses. This just happened to me in Thailand. I was in Thailand in uh, December. I landed there on 12-12 and I left on 12-23. And I, was, uh, I went to several places and I, you can watch Teresa's last episode. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. I shared about what happened there. And I just believe that the sex trade industry is coming down and, and it has, it's actually down right now. They've closed everything. It's come to a halt because of the coronavirus. The Lord did not send this, but a lot of corruption and darkness is at a halt right now. Amen. So, and a lot of those girls went home. So I pray that it will not come back. Um, but what Julie, you got muted. Unmute yourself. There we go. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you, hon. There's a, a static on. Somebody just came on. Yeah, yeah. So let me know if you can hear me okay, and I'll Yeah, we going. can hear you now. Okay. So... I was in Chiang Mai in late December, and I was in my hotel room spending time with the Lord, praying for my country, and I was fasting and praying, and um, just, I was thinking about Thailand, nothing else, just thinking about Thailand. And all of a sudden, the Lord said to me, we are in the days of Noah. Yes. That was the end of December. We are in the days of Noah. And we are to prepare as Noah did. 
And I was like, well, that's an interesting revelation. I'm not even thinking about anything else except Thailand. I'm praying into it, my role there, my next steps there, um, what the Lord wants me to do there. And just really taking it in because I felt like he said, I'm going to plant a base in, in Chiang Mai. And so I'm praying into all of that. And then he gives me this revelation that has nothing to do with what I'm seeking him for. <laughs> We're in the days of Noah. And so at the time, we didn't know how much we'd be preparing for the days we're in right now. When I got back to the U.S., it was announced just a few weeks later that the coronavirus came from China. Mm-hmm. And we know how it spread, how it has spread and made us all prepare for the flood of the virus spreading right now mm-hmm. across the earth. But it's coming to a stop. So I didn't, I, I, I heard that from him, but I didn't per se follow up on what that all meant. And I should have, I'm like, you know, I really should have pursued what the Lord was saying through all of that. But in that, you know, it's come back at me over the last, you know, couple of months. And I have been preparing and getting supplies and all those things that we need for our families to to stay shut in. But I really should have not ignored that as much. I should have like, okay, Lord, tell me more, tell me more, tell me more. And little did I know what we'd be going through. I think some of us were like, it really caught us by surprise. I mean, we've gotten words over the years that things were coming and all that, but nobody knew exact timing, you know, of when that was coming. So anyway, I'm just saying when I was in Thailand, I had, I was not even thinking of this and the Lord gave me that revelation. So I'm just saying it's so important to pay attention to our glimpses. We are, we, he told me in December, we are in the days of Noah and here we are. You know, it's really, really true because we don't really know what's going to happen. Um, Just when we think we have it figured out, here comes something else. And I really, I really believe the scriptures when it says, this is not the end yet. We have a lot of people saying, this is the end. This is it. This is that. This is it. This is that. But you know, the truth really is you can't put a scripture to something that unless God's breathing on it. Mm-hmm. And if God's not breathing on it, don't do it. Don't try to assume because I really think there should have been an 11th commandment. Thou shalt not assume <laughs> because I call it the sin of assumption because so many times we assume something that is kind of like in our spirit, but actually in our thought patterns, in our training, or it's in something that inspired us or whatnot. And it's not necessarily what God is saying. And I had an encounter with God, and this is like a few years ago, and I saw a plane, and Mm -hmm. I saw a plane coming into the United States, and it was dropping bombs. It had eight bombs. It had four on each side. And the Lord, I actually drew out the plane, and my, as you know, Julie, my husband's a military man. Right. And I drew out the plane because I was so shook up by this plane. I'm not going to go into the details of this plane or what was in the dream. But the dream was that that there were eight attacks coming. Oh my. Because there were four and four makes eight. Mm. And China was one of them. Mm. And I drew the plane and I showed it to my husband. And he challenged me. He goes, where did you get that picture? I said, what do you mean where did I get that picture? I just told you I had to dream and this is what I saw in the dream. Dream. He goes, not very many people know about that plane. Not very many many people know that, that that plane can carry Mm -hmm. that many bombs. And I drew the size of the bomb. And they were huge. They were huge. And he said, planes today don't do that. And I said, but this one did. He goes, I know that plane. And if I had paid attention, if I had just paid attention, I might have been able to put, you know, put the warning out. But the only thing that I could really do, and I'm just being honest, ladies and gentlemen, was when the coronavirus was starting to hit in January, when the president started to stop, when he said no flights coming in, they're trying to impeach him and he's trying to save the country. It's, it's an oxymoron. Right. But um, when that, I saw that, I actually told my congregation at church, I said, this is really an act of war. Mm -hmm. And when the president came out and said that we were in an unseen, you know, we had an unseen enemy and it was war. It really is. You don't know where the virus is going to attack. You don't know. The reason it's called COVID-19 is because it's the 19th strain of Mm. this SARS virus. 
It's 19. We don't know what number 20 is going to do because these are man-made viruses and they keep adding to them and they keep mutating them to see what more damage that can be done. This is what the enemy is good at, ladies and gentlemen. He mutates and he changes the same thing over and over again. And we're caught off by surprise when we really should never be caught off into a surprise of what the enemy is doing because right. God doesn't allow anything to happen where he doesn't reveal it to the prophets. Yep. That's the scripture. Mm -hmm. He says, I reveal things to my prophets. But unfortunately, and I'm not saying this just for me, I think it's for a lot of us, this unseen war that we're in, this unseen enemy, this is such a foreign territory to us. Right. And even in the prophetic realm, many don't know how to respond to it. And I think what's happening, and I, I really sense this, and this could be a prophetic word for somebody listening, but the way we prophesy and the heartbeat of the prophetic, in, in not in every way, but in many ways, is going to shift because people are going to get to a point now where they really want to hear from God because mm -hmm. we're desperate. Right. And not just hear... You know, you have an, Elijah list is huge. I'm nowhere near as big as Elijah list. We only have like 10 or 11,000 people subscribe to ours. But, and if you want to subscribe, please go to Global Prophetic Voice and subscribe and go to Elijah list and subscribe because we don't always carry the same words. And we, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I would not even allow myself to have Global Prophetic Voice until I had permission from Steve Schultz. It's true, Julie. I had to have permission from the father of the online prophetic. But anyway, what I'm sensing in the spirit prophetically is what's about to take place is many of the prophets are going to really lock in. And I'm not saying that because this thing has hit us that God did it so that the prophets could lock in. I am not going to blame God for this because God is not the author of death. No. I'm not going to blame God for this. But I will tell you this, God will use it and he will wake us up. Mm -hmm. And I feel like yeah, there's a word I put out. I think it was around last July about the prophets that were hidden, that were in the caves that are coming out. I believe when all this is over, we're going to start seeing a wave of the prophetic coming out with such profound wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in that encounter that I had with those prophets in the cave, there were so many children and mothers nursing their babies were all in that. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when this comes through, get ready. This is going to be one hot potato for God. Absolutely. And, you know, just before um, I started speaking, you know, you prayed and I went into a vision and this is what I saw. Yeah. I saw a vision of a portal. Mm -hmm. And there was a whirlwind. It was a whirlwind in this portal. And so I just feel like God is just going to pour out a fresh whirlwind of his presence and heavenly portal so we can start um, receiving that those fresh new revelations and those downloads mm -hmm. tonight. So before we go, we'll pray into that. And um, while I was getting ready before I came on, um, I started laughing because the Lord gave me a revelation of this time too. He said, it's the rest before revival. <laughs> That's a good word. And so, and I started laughing because, you know, before this, how many of us are, well, I'm busy. Can we get together? I'm busy. Do you have time for me to do this and that? I'm busy. We're always busy, busy, busy. We're busy people doing this and that and the other. Well, guess what? All of that has come to a halt. None of us are busy like we used to. Yes, we can do things from home. We can get online. We can write. We can, you know, still work from home for those of us who can. Of course, we're, we're, we're working, but um, we're home. We're resting. We're seeking God. We're praying. And it's like, imagine in all the busyness before this happened, if God would have brought revival, how exhausted would he have been bringing it to a busy, exhausted yeah. church? Come on now, where we were just running on both ends. Some people travel all over the world. Yeah. They're hardly home. Um, and they, they're really busy with ministry and family life and all that. And God just brought all of that to a halt. How are you going to pour out revival when you're exhausted? You know, it's really true. And you think about this as well. How are we going to handle the fact 
that really, you know, our churches have been shut down. Look at what happened to Rodney Howard Brown, and he won the case. And now in California, um, one of the mayors in California has just brought out a proclamation today that no online streaming of worship. No. Yes, that came out today. Wow. And then yesterday we saw the people, you know, at least 10,000 vehicles showed up in um, Michigan to right. protest the governor. Yesterday. And, and uh, by the end of the evening last night, the governor had already changed and shifted a little bit on homeschooling because she wasn't even going to allow the homeschoolers. You know, I mean, this, this, there's a thing out there, ladies and gentlemen, called a power grab. And power grabs happen when we're about to lose something. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, now we're not even allowed to go into the church. How many people would say, gee, I wish I had gone to church. I'd been in church, supported a church. Because you see, this would never have been allowed to happen if the church had got up and been the church and welcomed everybody in their doors. Mm. instead of criticizing and condemning and or judging or competing you know do i go to all these conferences or do i follow my church you know let me tell you ladies and gentlemen some of the top prophets and top people that are out there that can get on a facebook and have forty thousand people on it at 11 o'clock at night all pay ties to their local church I was with millionaires and billionaires not long ago, and the question was asked, how is it that you are so successful and you stay steady? They said, if I did not support my local church, I could never have succeeded. Mm -hmm. Every one of these, every one of them said the same thing. Mm -hmm. And my husband and I sat back going, I thank God that we support the local church. I thank God that we support the local church because now the local church is under massive attack. The Christian's under attack. The veteran is under attack. The senior citizen, every one of them are being told to go into lockdown, 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 or lock out. Mm -hmm. What do we need? We need a renewal in the church And we need to say, I will not be reckoned with. Why? Because we have the anointing that destroys the yoke. Mm -hmm. That's really the way I feel about it. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to use the anointing God gave us and not be afraid. Be a voice and not be afraid. Go ahead, Julie. I was just going to say that what you're sharing just reminds me of like, Julie, you cut out. I don't know what happened. Oh, no, I don't hear Julie at all. Oh, no, Julie. Julie, 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 is it, please someone get into the chat box and let me know if you're hearing Julie. Yeah, something must have happened out there by her, ladies and gentlemen. Perhaps she'll come back on. Give me a moment and let me text her and see if she'll come back on. Boy, I tell you, we must have been wrestling against a principality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I just text her. Maybe she'll come back on. In the meantime, I would like to hear from all of you. Yeah, she got bounced out somehow, so she'll get back on. I want to hear from all of you. And if you have a question or if you want to say something, please let me know. Hey, Jules. There she is. She's coming back in. Completely, it completely shut down. And, I and, saw and that. And it's like, wow. <laughs> Wow. I was just sharing that Paul and Ananias in the midnight hour. 
that were locked in prison and the prison Hello, everybody. Pray, 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 everybody. Now, Julie, you're muted. I don't believe this. Let me unmute you. Okay, there you are. Now you're silent again. Oh, my gosh. There you are, Julie. You're and now, me. Julie, you're I'm sorry. It's, it's the connection must be getting bad. We're getting ready to have a real bad snowstorm here. Ah, uh, okay. That could be it. So, Julie, say a quick prayer for us, and then we'll just break it off. Yeah. Lord, we just thank you for the revelation to tonight and i thank you for the writers that they would even receive a new anointing fresh gifting right now that even as they've been listening to us tonight that um you've just been downloading into them and giving them fresh insight fresh to their hearts I, some of them even have like that on on books lord uh, i just take the dust off of uh, their books and and, and th there's a mantle of writing coming upon you and some of you have forgotten about it and have even said it's not of God and the enemy has lied to you. Well, take the book off the shelf because God is about to download into you fresh revelation. Um, and uh, you're just going to be amazed at the encounters that you have to receive from him. Um, we just ask for that portal, that open portal, that whirlwind, God, that I saw tonight to just be uh, poured upon people. You just give them an open portal heaven to write with fresh revelation, fresh insight, and um, revelation they have could change lives, shift lives, and speak into their own family lives as well. It's not just um, a, a general um, revelation. A lot of it will be key specific revelations for nations, for communities, for regions, and for their own family. And it'll help them, uh, it will equip them for what you have ahead as well. We just thank you, God that you would just downpour right now on all of us, fresh new insight. We thank you, God, that we have the pen of the ready writer and we're ready to receive from you. Amen, amen, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to become a partner with Global Prophetic Voice. Just go to globalpropheticvoice.com and you can partner with us for those, you know, just go and look at the partner packages that we have there. In the meantime, we will have um, Jennifer Ives will be on next week. And Julie, we love you so, so much. And we're so glad that you came on. And we're going to say, walk with the king, everybody, tonight. Don't forget to get to Elijah List. Read that word from that seven-year-old boy. Subscribe to Elijah List. Subscribe to Global Prophetic Voice. And walk with the king and be a blessing. Bye-bye. <laughs>